Hallelujah. Oh, why don't you come on, clap your hands, rejoice unto the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, oh God. We thank you. For you are the God of the breakthrough. We call breakthrough and deliverance now. God, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that you will, Lord God, allow, Lord God, everything in our lives to be broken up, God, that you will deliver. There is great breakthrough in this place today. And we bless your name, God. And we surrender it everything with the praise today. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just for a few more moments. Come on, let's open up our mouths and let's lift up the Lord in this moment. We love you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Zion, lift up your voice in the house of the Lord. Come on, Lord, we want you to save your people this morning. Come on, heal us again. Revive us again. Set our minds straight. Come on, as we seek your face, God, we love you today. Heal us again. Save your people, Jesus. Revive us again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're asking for the Lord to save us this morning. Anybody really want to be saved? Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together like this. Come on, put your hands together, yeah. Come on, we're going to teach you a new song. It goes like this. Save your people, oh Lord, oh Lord. Save your people, oh Lord.
Because he knows he provides for us. Does anybody know God to be a provider? Has he ever made a way for you? Has he ever provided for you when you didn't have it? Hallelujah. Has he ever opened the door that was shut by man? But God has the final say because he's our provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. And he's enough for us. Hallelujah. He's enough. Hallelujah. I've never been more loved than I am right now. Yeah. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I've never been more loved than I am right now. Can I sing a second verse? I was going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You would cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Help me say, and you are a child. You are enough. You are enough. Yeah.
one more time, say forever enough. Forever enough. Always enough. Always enough. More than enough. More than enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forever. forever enough. Always enough. Always enough. More than enough. More than enough. Hallelujah. Come on, this last verse says, I don't want to forget how I feel right now on the mountain town. I can see so clear what it's all about. So stay by my side till the sun goes down. I don't want to forget how I feel right now.
love that part. And I will be content in every circumstance. Cause Jairus, he is enough. Come on, give the Lord a praise one more time as the man of God comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay, as I will be. I will be content in every, in every circumstance. Yeah. Jaira, yeah. you are enough. Just one more time, Jaira. Jaira, you, you are enough. Jaira, Jaira.
sing it like you mean it. Tell them, and I will be content. And I will be content in every circumstance. In every circumstance. Jaira. You are enough. One more time, Jaira. You are enough. You are enough. Just give me the keyboard, Jaira. Stay right there. Say, Jaira. Get that in your spirit today. He's speaking to somebody. Jaira. And I will be content. In every circumstance. Jaira. Now come on, give God the praise that's due His name. Come on, worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. Somebody's been feeling empty, but take this moment right now and worship Him. If you can't say anything else, just say, God, you are enough. God, you are enough. God, you are enough. It's in you that I live. It's in you that I move. It's in you that I have my being. God, you are enough. You are enough. Just say that until it gets in your spirit. God, you are enough. You are enough. Glory to God. You are enough. So I am enough. You are enough. So I am enough. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's speaking to somebody right now. Move by your spirit, God. Fill us once again. God, with hands uplifted, we receive you today. We honor you today. We surrender our will. And we say, God, you are enough. Father, as we prepare for your word today, fill us up once again. Anything in us that is not like you, we ask right now in this very moment, take it out of us. Everything that's been in your place, we remove it now in the name of Jesus. Take it out of us now, God. Flush our spirits, Father. Create in us a clean heart. God, I feel you. And renew in us the right spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said amen. Amen, amen. Give God praise for our wonderful worship team that led us in worship today glory to God I thank God for two of my very best friends are here Pastor Cliff Clark and Pastor Kellen Brooks is here give God praise for them and Karis is here we give God praise y'all clap for Karis amen amen praise the name of our God and my sister-in-law in the back just celebrated her 40th birthday. She's waving back there. Y'all see her. Give God praise for her. Amen. We had a great time celebrating her. We love you, Tiffany.
Let's go to the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're standing. We're standing, those of us who can, for the Word of God. And we'll read verses 16 through 21. Ephesians 3, we'll read verses 16 through 21. Amen. Today is also, I believe it's today, uh, Minister Shaniqua's birthday is today. Let's give God praise for her. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read from the King James Version. You'll find these words. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Somebody say, in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Today's message is entitled, It's an Inside Job. Somebody say it's, somebody say it's an inside job. Come on and take your seats. It's an inside job. Y'all give God praise for these wonderful musicians today that have blessed us. God bless you and God keep you. It's an inside job. My brothers and sisters, I think that too often we find ourselves trying to show us or trying to show the world how much we have based upon decorating ourselves on the outside. We decorate ourselves with clothes. We decorate ourselves with the types of cars we drive. We decorate ourselves with the type of people we surround ourselves with, but I've found that you can be dressed up on the outside and messed up on the inside. And many times we find ourselves in situations where the things that we have gathered, the things that we have attained are no longer attainable or, or sustainable, excuse me, all because we've missed the most important part of what we need, and that comes from the inside. So many of us are filled. Our bank accounts are filled, but we're still empty. So many of us have uh, contacts that we could call people all day long, but at the end of the night, we still feel empty. Many of us have gotten the job, we've gotten the degrees, we've gotten all of these accolades, but at the end of the day, we still feel empty, and it's not because of what we will get from without, but because we are empty on the inside. But tell somebody it's an inside job. There are certain things that, that, that you need to have on the inside. There is a certain relationship with Jesus Christ that you need to have, and until you get it, you will continue to feel empty. I once heard a song, and it said, there's a God-shaped hole in my heart, a, a, a hole that only God can fill, and oftentimes we find ourselves in places where we are, 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 are unsatisfied or dissatisfied. Relationships uh, can't satisfy us because we're expecting them to do what only God can do. Jobs, uh, you're making the money that you wanted to make at the time that you wanted to make it, but still dissatisfied because your job can never take the place of God. And so we find ourselves in this text. It starts off by saying that he 
would grant you, that God would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his power, by his spirit in the inner man. That word grant stuck out to me. Somebody say grant. Last year, we were blessed to receive um, $25,000 in grant money. Last year, we were granted, to re we granted, we received grants up to $25,000. And those grants were wonderful. But I found out that when you look up the word grant, you'll find out that what it means is it's when somebody bestows or transfers something that is already in existence to you. And many of us, you got to understand that even though the grant was already in existence before it was awarded to us, we needed somebody in authority to sign it over and transfer it to our account. Can I tell you that there's somebody in here that you've been praying for some stuff and you've been fasting and you've been believing God for some stuff, but I want you to know it's already in existence. You're just waiting for the transfer. I wish there was somebody in here that would catch that revelation and say, I know that what I need from God, it already exists. I'm just waiting for God to transfer it to my bank account. I'm waiting for God to transfer peace into my mind. I'm waiting for God to save my children. Somebody just shout out, there's a transfer coming. I wish there was somebody who believed that in this place. There was somebody who understood that what you've been praying for, what you've been fasting for, what you've been believing God for, it's already in existence. You're just waiting for a transfer. Give God a praise if you know it already exists. Give God a praise if you already know that the thing that you've been calling on God for in prayer, it's already in existence. You're just waiting on a release date from heaven. He says, God wants to grant you. God wants to grant you according to his riches. He doesn't have to create your blessing. He just wants to grant it to you. Tell somebody, access granted. I wish there was somebody in here right now that would just receive that word. Access granted. The thing you've been praying about. The thing you've been worrying about. The thing that you've been crying about. Now maybe there's nobody in here. Maybe there's nobody that's streaming today that needs anything thing from the Lord, but I believe there's at least seven of y'all today that will give God a praise before it reaches your account, that will give God a praise before your situation changes, that will give God a praise before uh, the people call and tell you that the check is in the mail. Tell somebody access has been granted. What I've been crying about, God's already answered it. What I've been believing God for, it's already coming to pass. Who am I talking to in here that can say I got radical faith that I can praise God right now like it's already in my hand. What kind of praise would you give God if he had already answered your prayer? What kind of praise would you give God if your next blessing depended on the praise that you gave God right now? What kind of praise would you give him if your next card depended on the praise that you were going to give God? What kind of praise would you give them if your next relationship was dependent and contingent upon the praise that you gave God right now? How would you praise him? I believe there's some folk in here today that have gotten so comfortable that you don't know how to praise God before the battle is over. But I believe that there are some folks in here right now that can give God a praise before the transfer. You can give God a praise because you know access has been granted. Access granted. It's going to be transferred. I speak prophetically to somebody today to let you know the transfer is already taking place. The thing that you've been praying about, it's already in existence. You're just waiting on a release date from heaven. God, I thank you that it's already in existence. But even though it already exists, you got to understand you got to understand a few things that he says in verse 16. Uh, what you're going to get from the Lord, it's going to come by his spirit in the inner man. By his spirit in the inner man. By his spirit in the inner man. Somebody say the inner man. 
We got to focus on the inner man. We have been so hyper-focused on the outer man, on outer appearance, on what other people think about us, on how other people feel about us. But sometimes you got to stop all of that and say, Lord, I need to focus on the inner man. I got to focus on my heart. I got to focus on my thoughts. Can I tell you that the reason you need to focus on the inner man is because for many of us, uh, you have believed all of the hype that the world would try to say, uh, all of the societal norms, everything that Instagram tells you you need, you have, you have believed the hype and you find yourself in all of this glory on Instagram only to go back home and still be depressed. So uh, you got all of these likes on Instagram, but the truth is half of them folk don't really like you. Uh, uh, you got all of these people who follow you on Instagram, but they, they won't follow you to church. What influence do you really have? I wish there was somebody that would talk to me. You got all of these folks who have all of this commentary on your Facebook page, but none of them are willing to pay any bills. None of them are willing to do anything in your life. What am I trying to say to you? You have become too focused on the wrong thing. Somebody shout, focus. Now I'll say it a little bit louder than that. Somebody shout focus. focus. He says by his spirit in the inner man. Some of our greatest blessings have been overlooked because we are conditioned to recognize blessings as tangible commodities. Some of our biggest blessings have been overlooked and we don't acknowledge them all because we are waiting on something tangible in our hands. But I found that some of the greatest blessings are not those that I can place in my hands. Sometimes the greatest blessing is just having enough peace to be able to go to sleep at night. Sometimes the greatest blessing is the fact that when I wake up, I don't wake up feeling guilty because God has already forgiven me. I'm talking to somebody that knows some of the greatest blessings are not, uh, you're not able to see them. It's not tangible, but it's living and it's alive in your life. Can I tell you something? We, we focus on this outer man so much, but I want to tell you something. I was in the hospital a few weeks ago and, and, and. I found out that your body will tell on you when something dysfunctional is going on inside of you. Your body will tell on you when something uh, on the inside is not taking place. You can put as much makeup on as you want. You, you can put on uh, the nicest clothes that you have, but your body will tell on you when something inside of you is dysfunctional. In January, I had what's called Bell's Palsy. Bell's palsy is when half of your face uh, will lose activity. Uh, Bell's palsy is when half of your face loses activity. So even though you can lift one eyebrow, the other eyebrow won't move. Even though you can smile with half of your face, the other half of your face won't move. Uh, but what I found out is that Bell's palsy is a virus. A virus that causes inflammation on your brain and because there's something going on in your brain now your body begins to tell on you because you can see it in your face I'm waiting on somebody to catch the revelation I, 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 I let me talk to somebody that knows anything about uh, medicine at all there is a condition called jaundice Jaundice is when your eyes uh, get a yellowish color. Your eyes become discolored. Uh, but jaundice is really an indication that something further is going on in your liver. Your body tells on you when something is going on on the inside. Somebody's going to catch this revelation in a minute. And just like that, something happens uh, with your spirit. Your spirit tells on you by the decisions you make. When your spirit ain't right, your decisions will tell on you. When, when your spirit ain't right, your decisions will begin to tell us that something ain't right on the inside of you. And, and some of us, you act, you got a real good shout on Sunday, but your decisions tell us that something ain't right. Some of us got a real good praise. You got a real good worship. You know when to stand. You know when to sit. But your decisions will tell on you. I wish somebody in here would, would help me preach this thing and say, you got to watch your decisions because your decisions will tell if you got a prayer life. Your decisions will tell how much time you've been spending with God. Your decisions will tell when it's time for you to tithe. Your, your decisions will tell how much time you've been spending with the Lord. 
We've been so focused on the outer man, but the truth of the matter is it's the inner man that, that we have to pay some attention to. The text says in verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your heart. Somebody say dwell. Uh, somebody say that again. Say dwell. Some of us, uh, we understand God on Sunday and on Wednesday, but that's not dwelling. That's just a nice visitation. And some of us have gotten so used to coming to church and getting our quick fix, but God says, I don't want to visit you. I want to dwell with you. You think you know a person uh, when they visit you, but you, you don't know them until you've had a chance to live with them. I wish somebody would help me preach this message today. You, you think you know them. You, you think because they tickled your fancy. You think because they put butterflies in your stomach. You think because y'all had some wonderful, nice, vulnerable conversations that you really know them. But I need some married folk that can understand. I, didn't, I thought I knew them, but I didn't know them until I got to living with them. You don't know a person until they dwell with you. My brothers and my sisters, God says, I don't want a visitation. I want habitation. I want to live with you. I want to wake up with you. I want to go to bed with you. I want to go to work with you. I want to walk with you. I want to talk with you. Is there somebody in here with the Holy Ghost today that can say, I'm so glad he lives with me. I need a God who dwells with me. I need a God who doesn't just show up when it's convenient. I need a God who doesn't just show up when he feels like it. I need a God that doesn't just show up between 9 and 5. I'm so glad that the line is never busy. I, I can call him up and tell him what I want. I wish there was somebody in here that says, Lord, I thank you for the habitation. I thank you that you live with me. He says... I want you to dwell here that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted, being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend. Being rooted and grounded in love. Somebody shout love. love. Being rooted and grounded. Your foundation has to be love. Can I tell you that the problem with many of us is that we are more lawful than we are loving. The problem with many of us, the reason that we can't keep a relationship, the meaning, the reason that we can't keep friends is because we are more lawful than we are loving. And it's real easy, it's real easy to be lawful when you forget about how you messed up the law. When you forget about how many times you failed. When you forget about how many times you needed grace. And, and I, I, I used to travel a lot, uh, get in the car and I would drive to D.C., I would drive down south. And, and many of you, maybe you've had this experience. When you get in the car, you get on 75 South and you're driving and, and you don't see the cops. And since you don't see the cops, you speed up, even though you know that the speed limit says 70, you're doing about 80 and 90 and sometimes 100. You speed up, and, and, and it's not until you get home from the trip that you found out that even though you didn't see the cops, the cops saw you. Uh, because you got an unexpected uh, citation in the mail. You thought you were going to get a check, but you got a citation in the mail that saw you at the right time. They saw you when you were speeding. They saw you while you were in, you were in sin. And many of us, uh, we do the same thing with our lifestyles. We think that God didn't see us because we didn't see him come into our situation right uh, instantaneously. We think that we got away with something because we didn't get penalized 
realized right away. I'm talking to somebody in here. You think that because nobody was at the Red Roof Inn with you, you think that everything was going to be all right until you had to go to the doctor because something wasn't working uh, the way that you thought it should have been working. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. You thought that you were getting away with something only to find out that God never allows you to get away with anything. It's just his grace to cover you. And I wish there was somebody in here today that can say, I was guilty, but I thank God for grace. I, I, I didn't say everything I was supposed to say, but I thank God for grace. I didn't forgive as quickly as I should have, but I thank God for grace. Who am I talking to in here? That can say, I was guilty, but I thank God for his grace. Some of us are more lawful than we are loving. But the Bible says that we should be rooted and grounded in love. That we should be rooted and grounded in love. After you become rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, the Bible says that's when you can now comprehend what I've been trying to show you the whole time. I love Ephesians 3 and 20, but it means so much more when you realize that you won't understand what's going on in Ephesians 3 and 20 until you become rooted and grounded in love until you live a lifestyle of loving folks and not trying uh, to catch folks and, and throw them to hell as soon as they mess up. But when you love somebody, you say, I know you messed up, uh, but a just man falls seven times and gets up again. You ought to be able to pick somebody up. When you're rooted and grounded in love, it says, now you can comprehend. Somebody say, now I understand. Uh, now you can comprehend the breath and the length and the depth of how much God loves us and how much he has in store for us. And even though God wants to grant you according to his riches, you'll never get it until you understand his love. Somebody say, I got to understand his love. Why do we always bring up uh, Jesus Christ at, uh, on the cross? Is because it is the greatest display of love that we've ever seen. The fact that he was facing all of these folk that didn't care about him, all of these folks who were guilty of their sin, and even though he was the only one who was innocent, he got on the cross for somebody else's sin. He loved you enough to say, you're the guilty one, you're the one who should be on the cross, but I love you enough to take your place. I wish there was somebody in here that would get excited about the love of Jesus Christ, that he loves you enough to stand in your stead. Once you're rooted and grounded in faith, once you're rooted and grounded in love, the Bible says, now unto him, now that you got your love right, now that you understand how to love one another. Now that you understand my love for you. Now that you're in a better place. Now I get you to understand. Now unto him who is able. Now you can comprehend the very capacity of God. Tell somebody, I didn't understand it when I first got saved, and I'm still getting a better understanding now, but I believe there's somebody in here that can say, I know God is able. I, I know that God can do what I can't do. I know that God is bigger than I can ever understand. Anybody know God is able? I wish somebody would just say, God is I'll let you fill in the blank. Whatever you need him to be, he is. Whatever you're lacking, he is. Whatever you're missing in life, he is. Somebody say, God is. Right. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Whatever concept of abundance you have in your head, God says, I'm going to exceed that. Whatever concept of abundance you have in your head, God says it's bigger than that. I wish there was somebody, my moment right, this purpose right now is for somebody that needs to understand the bigness of God. You need to understand how big he is. He's bigger than your bank account. He's bigger than your greatest problem. He's bigger than what you're going through right now. And that means you ought to give him a praise that is bigger than what you've been going through, a praise that is bigger. I wish somebody in here would take a moment right now and think about your biggest 
biggest challenge. Think about your biggest obstacle. Think about your biggest issue that you have right now and then give God a praise that's even bigger than that just to let the enemy know I might be going through right now but my praise is bigger because my God is bigger. Somebody ought to give God a praise right now. Give him a praise that says, my God is bigger. Give him a praise that says, my God is stronger. Give him a praise that says, it might be some stuff that's going on on the outside of me, but I thank God that inside of me, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. I wish there was somebody in here that would be grateful for the fact that you got joy, joy unspeakable, joy that is full of glory. Wish there was somebody in here that could give God a praise right now and say, I've been through the storm and the rain. I've been through sickness and pain, but I still have a praise. A praise that's bigger than my problem. A praise that's bigger than my issue. A praise that's bigger than depression. A praise that's bigger than diabetes. A praise that's bigger than the diagnosis, a praise that's bigger than my bills. Is there somebody here that will give God a praise right now? I know you've been going through for a long time, but I need to tell somebody God is able. Whatever your problem is, God is able. Whatever your circumstance is, I feel the Holy Ghost creeping up and through here. God is able. Whatever it is that's been blocking your path, tell your neighbor, God is able. Tell them, don't give up. And don't throw in the towel because the God I serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. That means it's time that we get to asking because God says if you ask it, I'll exceed it. If you pray about it, I will exceed it. If you fast about it, is there somebody here that's got something you need from the Lord? Say, neighbor, I got some big requests, but my God is bigger. If it's God's choice, it's God's invoice. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I got something big and it's on the way. Look down your row and say, I got something big and it's on the way. Big money, big dreams, big forgiveness, big peace. He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind. Oh, say it on him. Is there somebody? Is there somebody? Is there somebody here that can say, I got something that the world can't give. It's an inside job. Only God can do it. Only God can heal. Only God can save. Only God can redeem. Only God can reconcile. Only God. Somebody help me preach this thing. We got to get out of here. But tell them this job, it's for God and God alone. This job, it's a job for the master. And I, 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 I need to tell somebody that the king has one more move. Just when you thought it was over, just when you were about to, to throw in the towel, the king says, I got one more move. Don't give up just yet. Your enemy said checkmate, but the king has one more move. Is there anybody here, anybody, anybody here that will give God a praise?
knees and said, the king's got one more move. Just when I was about to give up, just when I was about to throw in the towel, just when I said the game is over, the king stepped in. And just in case you don't realize it, the king is here. And you better tell him what you need. You better say, Lord, this move is on you. This job is on you. This responsibility is on you. We got to get out of here. But would you just take 30 seconds and apply your faith right now and give God a praise to let the enemy know that you're not throwing in the towel. So let the enemy know that you're not giving up. So let the enemy know that your children will be saved. Let the enemy know that the investment is going through. Let the enemy know that bankruptcy is not the end for you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor God is able. God is able, God is able, God is able, God is able. You ain't got to listen to me, you can just say God is able, God is able. (laughs) Say it until you believe it in your spirit, God is able. (laughs) I need somebody anointed to just start walking the flow (laughs) and say God is able, God is able, (laughs) God is able. (laughs) see your capacity and it's bigger than I can understand God is 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 He's able. He's able. I know this is not what we usually do, but I feel this in my spirit. I hear the name Sister Doreen Sutton. Sister Doreen Sutton. I'm asking the believers right now. The sermon is over. But I'm asking the believers to begin to pray in the spirit right now for Sister Doreen Sutton. Begin to pray that God would cover her, that the death angel has to pass her, that the blood of Jesus would cover her in the name of Jesus. Call her name, call her name. Sister Doreen, it's going to be all right. Sister Doreen, you can get through this. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. I speak in the name of Jesus that illness will not be the end all be all. That God would cover Sister Doreen. That God would begin to. to strengthen her body. Somebody speak strength right now in the name of Jesus. Strength, strength, strength. Strength, 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 strength. What physical therapy can't do, God can do. What the doctors can't figure out, God can do. Tell somebody, God is able. I speak in the name of Jesus that an angel would cover Sister Doreen Sutton. Sister Doreen, you are surrounded by the presence of God. You don't have to worry anymore. 
every attack that has come for your body. We bind it now. We steal the hand of the enemy now in the name of Jesus. But the worst attack is not what happened to your body. It's the mental warfare. But I pray right now that God would speak to you. That God would remind you that you are not alone. That you are not by yourself. Tonight as you sleep, we speak sweet peace. Every insecurity, every doubt, we mute the voice of the enemy now. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said amen. amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. Praise him like it's your deliverance. Praise him like your healing is on the way. Praise him like it's your mother, like it's your grandmother, like it's your aunt. In the name of Jesus, you may take your seats now. I pray that this word would strengthen the hearts and the mind of the person who is streaming today. It's an inside job. God wants to do a work, but the work starts on the inside of you. And when you give God permission to work on the inside of you, you will begin to see that the work won't stay on the inside of you. But we'll start seeing it. The power of God will be visible in every area and every aspect of your life. I'm asking each of you to spend some time with the Lord this week. Help him to know that you got the revelation that he does not just want a visitation. He wants habitation. He wants to live in you. I, I'm asking that you would join me every morning at 6 a.m. for the next 30 days every morning join me in prayer I'll be praying for you I'll be praying for myself I'll be praying for our nation I'll be praying for Haiti I'll be praying for every person that's connected to this ministry and I'm believing God for something and I'm asking you to do the same this this time of prayer will just be you and God we'll all be praying at the same time but I'm not doing a Facebook live I'm not doing any of that I want to be able to lay on my face and talk to the king and not worry about having to hit a live button we are mature enough that we ought to be able to pray when there's a call to pray amen so I'm asking you to do that to pray with me for the next 30 days starting tomorrow I didn't know I was going to say this, but I felt led to for the next 30 days. And I want you to include Sister Doreen Sutton in your prayers. I've not spoken with her. She just showed up in my spirit. But we're praying with her. And we want her to know that even though she can't be with us physically, that we are praying for her. And we're believing God for her. Amen? Amen. At this time, we want to prepare for our offering. If you need an envelope, you have that opportunity to just wave your hand. Those of you who are streaming, those ways to give are on the screens at this time. Those of you who are here who would like to give your tithes and your offering electronically, you have that option as well. That information is on the screens. We are a tithing church. We are a tithing church. And because of it, every need shall be supplied. Would somebody say that with me? Every need shall be supplied. We believe that. We believe that. Of course, you have the option to take a picture of the QR code on the back 
of the pew, you have that option. And it'll take you to our giving page. Of course, you can go to Cash App. And of course, you can text to give. It's the most convenient for me. Once you have filled out your envelope, once you have given electronically, we ask that you would stand so that we can prepare to pray. We thank God and we want to congratulate Bam, who uh, has got some big things coming up. I saw him, um, maybe I should let him tell it so I don't mess it up, but he was, <laughs> he's doing something great with Fred Hammond coming up, amen? Come on, let's give God praise for him. Y'all don't know it, but Bam is an incredible, incredible psalmist, incredible singer and recording artist, and uh, we're just grateful that he uh, made some time for us. Amen. Amen. And of course, we thank God for all of our musicians, but we're just going to honor Brother Bam today. This is your day. Amen. This is your day. Amen. Are you humble? I'm humble. I'm... Amen. We th uh, let me hurry up before I get too silly. Amen. Take your, take your electronic device. Take your envelope. Amen. And we're going to lift it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us it's an inside job. Whatever it is that we need, we know it already exists. We're just waiting on the transfer. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless every person who is in our midst. Every person who is streaming from all across the world, bless them. Bless their finances. Bless their families. Bless their endeavors. And remind them, Father, that because we are willing and obedient, we shall eat of the good of the land. Bless every gift and every giver now. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, amen. 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 If you gave electronically, you can take your seats. Those of you who have an envelope, just stand until someone comes to get that from you. And there may be someone today who has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. We want to make sure that we take this time to acknowledge you and to let you know whether you are here in our midst or streaming today, you have an opportunity to be a part of the family of God. This moment right now, we're going to pray a prayer with you of salvation and repentance. That you would allow the Lord to come into your heart, to transform you. So that from this day forth, you'll be able to say that you are saved. Repeat after me, every person. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for all my sin. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe you died. I believe you rose. And I believe you live. From this day forth, from this day forth, come on, say it loud and proud. From this day forth, I am saved. Now clap your hands for all of those who have prayed that prayer for the first time today. Amen. We give God praise for you. If you're here and you prayed that prayer for the first time, please let our staff know on your way out. We want to stay connected with you. If this is your first time with us, make sure you have a welcome card so that we can stay connected to you. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. We're going to stand and be dismissed at this time. Let us stand. Uh, announcements? I'm sorry. Minister Stephen Hibbert is coming at this time. You may be seated. I'm sorry for the announcements. It's almost time. I'm so sorry. Praise the Lord, everybody. Real quick in your hearing. Um, this week, 
for Wednesday, we have our life groups. Um, life groups have been going amazing. Amen. Our life group leaders have been doing a phenomenal job. Why don't you just clap your hands and give praise for our life group leaders? They have been doing an awesome job. So life groups are this Wednesday. If you need more information, you can see myself or you can see Brother Jared in the back at the door. Um, everybody say anniversary. This year marks our second pastoral anniversary for Redeeming Love Church. Amen. And it is we are celebrating our pastor's anniversary. This is he has been with us for two years, Redeeming Love Church. We celebrated our second anniversary, church anniversary in June. But we are gonna celebrate our pastor. Amen. For the word declares, give honor to whom honor is due. And we honor our pastor. He is a great and humble man. But we just got to love on him some more, y'all. So, October the 10th at 1.30 p.m., we will be in service. We invite all those to come. We ask that you bring your families as well. We have a special guest preacher. It is going to be Pastor Frank Harris. And we have a guest worship leader who is going to be none other than John Houston Smith. So we want you to invite everybody out. Um, you will get further details this week and in the, in the weeks to come about what we have planned. We don't want to tell him because it's a surprise. So we just go let him, um, you know, be encouraged and surprised on October 10th. Amen. Why don't we give our pastor a great hand clap of praise? Amen. And at the end of this month, we have um, Halloween Harvest Family Day. Harvest Family Day. Let's, let me clean that up. Let me clean that up. Harvest Family Day, okay? So in lieu of Halloween, the world celebrates Halloween. We just come together and bless the name of Jesus. But... Um, for an alternative for Halloween, Sunday, October 31st, following directly after service, there will be lots of fun activities for all ages. Of course, we'll have a bounce house. We'll have a DJ. We will have um, a chili cook-off. We need candy donations, okay? So you can start bringing your donations. There will be uh, a receptacle in the back to receive those donations for Halloween for Harvest Fun Family Day. I'm sorry, my notes say Halloween. We'll have to fix that in, for next week. God bless you. So, um, October 31st, directly after service, all right? Anybody blessed by the Word of God today? Amen. How many know that it's an inside job? Amen. Why don't you just rest on your feet so we can be dismissed? I'm, I'm sure, Mama. I got you, Mama. I got you. We going, we going this, we going this time, okay? Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this day. We thank you for what you have done, God. Thank you for allowing us to know that you are able, God. And Lord God, not only you are able, but we connect our faith with what you are doing. For the word declares that faith without works is dead. And now, God, this week and for the next 30 days, we intercede on behalf of those things. We lift up prayer and supplication for all these things that you are going to do for us. And we praise you in advance, God. Now give us traveling mercies, God, as we go to and fro. Bless us, Lord God, as we travel on the roads and and we reach our destination safely. For it is in your name that we thank God and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. God bless you and we will see you at Life Groups on Wednesday.